Hello, my friends. So first of all, I want to thank you for your support of Quantum Body, the new science of living a longer, healthier, more vital life. And uh, I wish to inform you that the book is doing extremely well and is already on many bestseller lists. Thanks to your support. In the meanwhile, by the way, the attacks on uh, my take on quantum mechanics, quantum body, quantum mind, and quantum universe have increased. Uh, the attacks on my take have increased. There are articles now appearing on quantum quackery with me as the leader in the field, but also mentioning Fritjof Capra and Amit Goswami, so not a bad company to be in. So while uh, mainstream quantum physicists scoff at the idea of the quantum field being um, imbued with subjectivity, I think we are finding more and more evidence for what is called quantum consciousness and quantum mind and how the quantum field is involved in epigenetic modulation, in morphogenesis and differentiation, in uh, intentionality, and in um, in our experiences of everyday reality yes the quantum field is considered objective but you can't have an object without a subject subject and object are entangled in every experience and before you can call anything an object anything an object this an object this an object it's an experience an experience happens in awareness there's no experience in the brain period as mentioned many times the brain shows neural correlates of experience so i think uh, mainstream quantum physicists uh, have a right to vilify us few quantum mysticists mysticists a few of us who are considered quantum mystics and uh, quantum quack quacks and quantum uh, um, um, quantum healers, whatever you want to call it. But we have to accept that. Right now, there are articles appearing in Medium on quantum quackery with me as the leading proponent of quantum quackery. You go to YouTube and you'll find uh, a lot of uh, mainstream quantum physicists attacking my take on quantum healing, quantum body, quantum reality, quantum consciousness. But that's fine. You know, it keeps us in the conversation. And I just want to share with you my current views. And current views are very simple. Fundamental reality is awareness. Without awareness, there is no experience. Everything that we call an object is first in experience. And the experience is in awareness. Awareness has no boundaries, and therefore it's infinite. Awareness has um, um, no form. It's infinite. You cannot look at awareness because it's the one that's doing looking. And ultimately, you and the universe are awareness, period. You and the universe are awareness. Without awareness, there's no knowledge. Without awareness, there are no models. Without awareness, there's no science. All science is in consciousness. As I've said many times, uh, theories are conceived in consciousness. Experiments are designed in consciousness. Observations are made in consciousness. The brain has no experience. It has the neural correlates of experience. Given that, and given that subject object are entangled, I feel that um, along with others, that the quantum field is, um, is the fundamental reality, but it is also awareness. It's also a quantum field. It's also a qualia field. And that um, intentionality, which we call the observer effect, is what precipitates a field of possibilities or a cloud of probabilities into a space-time event that we call an object. So the quantum field is also a qualia field and um, uh, evolution uh, may not be random uh, mutations and natural selection. This also raises a lot of 
um, eyebrows and criticism from evolutionary biologists and quantum physicists. But do your own research. Look at how intentionality uh, follows some of the principles of, uh, of quantum mechanics. Before you have an intention, it exists as a potential uh, probability cloud. Once you have the intention, then the orchestration of the intention has a biological phenomenon actually in, in, includes quantum principles, superposition, entanglement, non-local correlation, a causal, non-local, quantum mechanical interrelatedness. We are a whole movement of the universe. Genes, that what we call genes, are symbolic representations of the experiences of our ancestors in consciousness. And epigenetics is actually our experiences our experiences and the experiences of our immediate ancestors modulating um, gene activity either in the direction of homeostasis and self-regulation or inflammation and disease and genes are an expression a symbolic representation a cryptographic code for um, for uh, experiences of our ancestors as, of course, uh, um, uh, the experiences of our human and animal ancestors. So uh, I believe that uh, um, genes are a cryptographic code um, uh, and uh, they, are, uh, um, uh, they are driven by intentionality and purpose in evolution. Evolution normally by the materialists is seen as um, a, a process driven by um, random mutations, natural uh, selection, and has no role uh, uh, for consciousness. However, uh, more and more people are uh, agreeing that consciousness is a single unified phenomenon and that the field of consciousness is really a field that modifies itself as mind and the appearance of what we call matter which is a human name a human construct for a perceptual activity therefore evolution is purpose-driven evolution is driven by intentionality and evolution uh, is uh, even biological evolution is the evolution of an undifferentiated consciousness manifesting as diverse forms and phenomena and the differentiation of consciousness into forms and phenomena is what leads to the appearance of the human universe and that that what we call the human universe is actually a construct based on the recycling and evolution of modes of knowing such as uh, uh, perceptions and uh, and sensations and images and feelings and thoughts that's the fundamental experience of existence and it is in consciousness and everything else brain mind genes epigenetic activity are symbolic representations in time of an undifferentiated, timeless, irreducible, fundamental reality, which is awareness. Awareness is that which makes experience possible. Awareness is that uh, in which experience is known. Awareness is that in which uh, experience occurs. And awareness is that out of which experience is made in the form of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts, and perceptions and that everything that we call the objective world is actually a modification of that awareness which occurs at the most fundamental level of existence. So the quantum field, the qualia field, are the uh, fundamental reality that is modifying itself as mind, intellect, ego, sensory processes which are quantum in nature, motor activities which are quantum in nature and also intentionality which employs quantum principles superposition entanglement 
correlation and uh, observer effect and uncertainty. Now I know this is radically different from what mainstream scientists are saying. So even as you read my book, Quantum Body, uh, which is written by in collaboration with a quantum biologist, Jack tu Tuzinski, professor, and another professor, Brian Fertig, who is a professor in quantum metabolism, even though it's written by, uh, in collaboration with this, mainstream science is scoffing at it, ridiculing it, raising their eyebrows, and calling us quantum quacks. So, so be it. Quantum quackery keeps us in the conversation, and hopefully one day we'll see an upgrade in both uh, the understanding of quantum mechanics and its implications, an upgrade in science, and an upgrade in spirituality. In the meanwhile, thanks for your support, and notwithstanding that I'm a quantum quack, I'm happy be to be in your company and the company of people that I admire, including the pioneers, by the way. Uh, that included Schrodinger, who said that the wave function is similar to Atman. And without Schrodinger's equation, we wouldn't have quantum mechanics, including Max Planck, who said you can't be get behind consciousness, and including um, Niels Bohr, who said, said the things that we consider real are made of things that we normally consider unreal. The unmanifest quantum and qualia field are fundamental reality. The rest is a differentiated expression of that. So thank you for supporting uh, Quantum Cat Quackery. And onward, let's keep the conversation going with the mainstream scientists because uh, they have a lot to contribute with their math and with their discovery of particles. They are mostly uh, very smart nerds, but um, you know some of them have no idea of what Plato said or even the quantum pioneers said or forget about Wittgenstein and other Western and Eastern philosophers who look for deeper meaning and significance in existence while mainstream science um, basically looks at technology and how math can help us create better technology uh, and it is doing that both divine and diabolical but unless we go deeper into what it all means quantum mechanics remains a mathematical recipe for doing experiments anyway these are some thoughts and once again thank you for supporting quantum body take care